What's up guys, welcome back to the channel. In the shop, we got a buddy of mine's 2016 Dodge Ram 1500 with a 5.7. I'm gonna make a, a couple of videos for you. It needs a bit of work, so I'm gonna go over front brakes, back brakes, wheel bearing, and outer tie rod. Pretty straightforward stuff, but I'm gonna show you guys how to do it step by step. This video in particular is pertaining to the front brakes. <laughs> start by setting it up on the hoist and ripping our wheel off. All right, so first thing we're gonna to wanna to do is push the caliber back. That's achieved by getting a pry bar in there and pulling the caliber back all the way so that the pistons begin to recede into the caliper. I've already gone ahead and done that. That's why this is nice and loose. Once you've done that, go get your 13 millimeter and let's take off our caliper. Now, if your uh, caliper pin is spinning, you should get a pair of needle nose vice grips or even the right wrench size if you choose and just stop it from spinning so you can continue to remove the caliber. Now your caliber bolts might be seized so I recommend doing them by hand. On this truck in particular I know they weren't seized so I'm proceeding with the gun. So your caliper out of the way and don't let it hang on your flex line. Let the weight be suspended uh, on something else. pads out of there. Old pads. They were still in good shape when our rollers were rotted. So the truck sat for a long time and it was time to replace it. Next up, we're going to go for the caliber holder. We're going to get that with a 21 mil socket. One and two. Now our holder is off. You can go ahead, slide our old order off. And we are ready to slide on our new rotor. Okay, we slipped on our rotor, but before we dress anything up, I just want to give you guys a pro tip. Uh, your rotor is usually pretty loose. Now, unless you have a set screw, which obviously on this truck there is not, uh, use a nut to kind of help it hold it square for you. And I like to throw it on the bottom because in this way it can't come out on the bottom and you have a square rotor to keep assembling your brakes. Now, you can't go ahead and just slap your holder back on. You really need to clean these up. I'm not sure if you could see it, but right there, there was some rust preventing the pads from floating properly. So I cleaned them up with a little angle grinder. This guy here, okay? Uh, or you can do it by hand with a file, whatever works. Uh, and we're ready to put some lubricant on those positions right there. As you can see, a little bit of lubricant on all four spots. And these pads come with shims. Okay, most of them do. These, these shims go on the actual brake pad and then you slide the pad into the caliper holder. This is what it's gonna look like. You're going to have your pad, your clips on the ends. You're just going to do the same thing and lubricate these a little bit as well. Okay, you're going to lubricate it on the tabs. And you're going to throw some also on the back. Okay. Reason being is it kind of stops it from sticking against anything, but also I, I tend to, to, to like to think that the lubricant kind of absorbs any harmonic vibrations. So you should have less chance of a squeak if you put some lubricant on the back as well. Now with our caliper bolt started, go ahead and tighten those two bolts. Now always finish by hand so you can get a good feel for it. Now our pre-prepared pads can slip right into here, like so. And now we're ready to drop on our caliper. Now before we go ahead and put the caliper on, I wanna take a second and show you guys a tool that I like to use. This is what the tool looks like, okay? There's a part number from Mac Tools. 
I'm sure the suppliers have it as well. You can cross reference it. That's what it looks like. Basically what its purpose is, is it allows for full retraction of your caliper. So it can go on nice and easy. Basically it's got reverse threads on one side, regular threads on the other. And as you ratchet this thing, it's putting back your caliper. It's effortless, it's easy, and it's also safe and preferred for your caliper. Now we can take our caliper, slide it on, brake pads, making sure everything is still sitting properly. Get our two bolts. Now, again, I highly recommend at this point doing it by hand. I'm just gonna seat them with the gun and tighten them after. Now when you're done, let me bring it down a bit here. Now when you're done, what you want is a brake caliper that moves around nice like this, okay? The reason that is, if you notice, my pads are loose in here, okay? But that's only right now because we haven't pumped up the brake pedal. And by, by that, I mean pumping it with our foot inside the vehicle. Obviously what that'll do is it'll push our hydraulics or our, our calipers to close and so that the, uh, the pads meet the rotor and everything sits square. But reason you want it floating is so that it doesn't apply and then stay partly applied and you'll get premature pad wear that way, okay? That's another pro tip. All right guys, well, that was pretty straightforward. I mean, don't forget to pump your brake pedal when you're done, like I mentioned before, or you're gonna have no brakes and you might have some uh, stains in your underwear. But anyhow, uh, the same applies for the other side, exact same. Uh, so don't, don't, be, uh, don't be shy to go ahead and, and tackle this on your own. I'm gonna go ahead and change a tie rod on this side now, and I'm gonna start another video. So if you want to see what it takes to change a tie rod, watch the next clip. Thanks guys. Remember, full throttle so you can use your brakes.